Hey guys, okay, I'm gonna give a quick overview of program number two. Um, in this program, it's a little bit more of a simple format. Again, we got uh, three strength training days per week, just like in program one. With this one, however, we've got more of a basic linear progression for the strength work. Okay, so the, all that means is that you're just trying to add a little bit of load every week based on the previous week, okay? So with that, that, that essentially just means that you're loading by feel, okay, to a great degree, which works really well for people who are newer to lifting, okay? And even for seasoned veterans of the iron game, I feel that, you know, if you, the more that you can tune into how things feel as you're doing any exercise, of course, is important, right? Um, but just being able to add a little bit every week um, eventually is going to get you from point A to point B. And that works really well for a beginner to intermediate lifters. So um, there's a lot of work within this program that's done uh, for progression uh, in the term or in the sense of variances uh, with regard to tempo and then also like load positions. So with tempo, I've talked about it in program one. I'm going to touch on it a little bit more here in a second. But when I'm saying load position, that essentially means uh, something as simple as taking a kettlebell in a hang carry or a suitcase carry by the sides to do a reverse lunge uh, versus moving it to the rack position versus moving it to an overhead potential position. Okay, so obviously the hang carry is going to be probably the easiest for most people as compared to the rack position. Um, just because you can probably load it a little bit more down here. When we move it to the rack, yes, you are going to get the benefits of firing up the core and promoting a little bit better alignment throughout the entire torso um, with that reverse lunge because we're putting the load here. Um, but also, too, people are going to find it harder to load heavier here. And then when we move the weight overhead, of course, that's going to be a lot more challenging for some people. Some people may never need to do that. Um, and you're going to be limited as far as like loading. So for looking at a program based on a person's goals, if straight up getting stronger and loading a movement is what's most important, then of course we want to load a movement in a way that, that facilitates that. Okay. So if you were choosing a squat variation, um, and the straight up goal is just to load, 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 then you're probably going to want to go with a, like a back squat or a box squat not an overhead squat or a zercher squat, okay? Just because the load is put in an awkward position and you're not gonna be able to, to achieve the loading that you would on a back squat or a box squat. So um, the conditioning in this program is essentially uh, of a rounds for time format. I have to say too that uh, with these, I mean, you've got the options of letting people do it for time and making it more of a, like gaming it a little bit more, okay? But you don't necessarily have to do that. The emphasis should always be on sustainability. So when people are doing, of course, any of, of a, any piece of a workout, um, you don't want them having to stop for, for substantial amounts of time to catch their breath or if they feel like they're dying. Um, in between heavier strength work, yes, we want people to kind of be able to rest, but we have to keep in mind too, like this is group training. We're not really trying to train people for a specific sport, okay? We're not making power lifters out of our clients. If someone's wanting to do that, then that's great, but that would uh, necess necessitate a different kind of program, okay? We're, we're taking elements of all these kind of different aspects of the strength game and kind of fusing them with what, well, I am. That's what I'm bringing y'all. So, um, okay, so basically in a nutshell, Day one of each week is gonna be a deadlift variation, so we got very op various options there. Kettlebell, trap bar, sumo deadlift, conventional deadlift, rack pulls or block pulls, okay? Um, day two's upper body, it's a little bit more, we've got some, uh, there is some close grip bench work up in there, um, but a lot more dumbbell work, okay? So there's not really a lot of barbell work for the upper body lifting. Um, day three is a squat variation. So just like with the deadlift, we've got numerous variations there. We've got back squat, box squat, front squat, zercher, overhead. Um, we've got goblet squat with a kettlebell or dumbbell, and then a double racked kettlebell uh, front squat. So moving on, um, I mentioned it in the program one video, but with tempo, we notate it uh, with an at sign, or I think that's called an ampersand. My dad would be mad that I don't know that, but um, at and then four numbers. So 
just kicking it off with this, I'll lay this out here in a second, but if we're saying three, two, X, one, that essentially means that we have a three second eccentric on the squat, two second pause in the bottom position, a X is what I use to notate that you're just coming up from that bottom position with strength and intent and it's strong, okay? And then a one second pause at the top. So what I did here is I just kind of mapped out the, uh, to show kind of how tempo can be adjusted to progress a, uh, a lift. So we're using the back squat. So in week one, we've got a three, two X one tempo for five sets of four to six reps. We keep that for week two but we wanna to try to go a little bit heavier. So um, you've got options with this. You could actually, like my preference is to add a little bit of load with each set. And if you get to a weight that you feel like that's about where it needs to be for that day and you might have two sets left out of that or one set, then just stay there, okay? Um, week three is three, two, X, one again. We have five sets of three to four reps. So we're getting a little bit heavier. Week four, same kind of thing. We got five sets of two to three reps with the same tempo. In week five, we have again the three, two, X, one tempo, but here we're moving on to week one of two of cluster sets. So we're gonna do a, 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 a double, so basically two reps on the back squat. What's gonna happen here is that you're going to rack the bar for 10 to 15 seconds, unrack it, and then hit two more reps. So it's notated by 2.2. .2. So that's one set, okay? So that's a cluster set. Um, so two reps, 10 to 15 seconds rest, two more reps, okay? You rack the bar in between. Um, for the following week, for week six, what I did was I increased the tempo slightly to a 2-1-X-1 tempo, which slower tempos are going to necessitate lighter loads because you just don't have as much speed behind it. So. It's a logical progression to move from a slower tempo to a faster one, okay? So y'all can see that here. Um, in week six, six, it's the second of the two cluster set weeks. So we got a two, one, X, one tempo, five sets of one, one, one. So that means you're hitting a single rep, you're racking the bar, you're resting it for 10 to 15 seconds, unracking it, hit another single, you guessed it, rack it, 10 to 15 seconds, and then hit one more. So that's one set. <coughs> Okay, so moving along, week seven, we go back to a, just a straight up rep format. Tempo changes just slightly to a 2-0-X-1. So essentially what I did here was two second eccentric, no pause at that bottom position, drive up strong and then pause for a second at the top, okay? So a pretty common squat uh, tempo for most people. So we got four sets of eight. So with this, I suggest starting at 55 to 60% if you know your one rep max. Okay, if people aren't, if you're not working with one rep maxes and people don't know, it's not a big deal. The worst thing that can happen is you just start with a weight and it might be too easy and then you just increase a little bit, okay? So week eight, we're keep, keeping the sim, same tempo, four sets of six. Week nine, you guessed it, same tempo, 2-0-X-1 for four sets of four. And then for week 10, we're switching to a 1-0-X-1 tempo. We're going five sets of three. So the intent behind this is explosiveness and speed, okay? You're not free falling down into the hole on the squat. Um, you're taking a second to get down there. Um, so it's probably just slightly faster than what me most people would typically do if you say, just give me a squat. So five sets of three, week 11, we got a 10X1 again, five sets of two, so we're adding a little bit of load there. And then in week 12, it's 10X1 one more time, but we're doing it as an EMOM, so every minute on the minute, we're doing eight rounds of two reps using 55% of your one rep max. Again, if you don't know your max or if you don't know loading, the worst thing that could happen is you warm up a little bit and then you kind of get a feel for what may or may not be the best loading for that movement. I will say that using EMOMs can be eye-opening for a lot of people because you can take a light weight and it becomes Harder, okay, so it makes it a little bit more conditioning biased. Um, <clears throat> people don't really realize, I think, how much they rest in between sets if they're allowed to just do so on their own volition. So it's a neat way to kind of shake things up and kind of cap out the 12 weeks here, which is why I ended it with an EMOM. So there you have it. That's the tempo progression for the back squat that's in this specific program. Um, again, is this the way to do it? No, there's numerous ways that you can do it. But what I wanted to do is show a progression of going from slower to faster, 
and how the loading will be reflected in that. And then I also wanted to throw in the, the clusters to show how you could use those. And then again, cap it off with an EMOM, um, giving y'all some suggested loading for that. So y'all can just kind of um, get a feel for it. So that's it.